previously on The Bill. What did you do that for? I had a bad control. Well, I was trying to help. Oh, come on. I'm not the one that had to work with her. Sometimes you question yourself after that business with Zane. Well, we all misjudge Zane. He did everything he could. He shows two away at the family court. We would advise if we need backup. I'm killing them! I'm arresting you for assault. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you may later rely on. Are you okay? I'll call it out. No, no, no. I take it you know this man? Yes, Paul Conway. We're child protection. We've just had a hearing in the family court. The judge ordered his daughter to be taken into care. He's not looking after her properly. Well, I'm going to have to take him down the station. Which one? Sun Hill. I've got to go. Look, I need, I need a statement from you. I'll drop by after I've settled in at the foster parents. Look here. Right. Just me! <laughs> so you admit you struck the social worker and made threats to kill her? But she was taking my daughter. Paul, she was doing her job. Look, I know I shouldn't have lashed out. But it was a shock. We're there in court and Francine starts saying that Jasmina should be taken into care. Do you have any idea what that feels like? Where is Jasmina's mother? God knows. People think I'm a drinker. They should meet Carol. Look, I didn't mean to hurt Francine. What's going to happen? Well, you've admitted to the assault, which I did witness along with another officer. We have the victim coming in to make a statement, and until then, I can't be sure. Francine? Hi, yeah, uh, we met this morning. I'm Sergeant Wright. Yeah, hi, I'm here about Paul Conway. Right, we're just about to charge him now. We're going to need a statement from you now, if that's OK. No, I won't be prosecuting. But what about your face? I mean, he hit you. No, I know, Paul. He's not a bad man. Getting him locked up won't help his daughter. It's her that really matters. Right, well, whatever happens, I'm still going to need a signed statement from you, though. No problem. Can I see him? Right. There's your caution, Paul. It says you've admitted to the assault. Thanks for your help. Oh, that's no problem. Uh, this officer is showing up. Good luck. Right, so I've got an appointment at 11.30, but I can give you any time if you want. Cheers. Okay. What's that all about? Oh, I guess you just want to help him out. Anyway, we do our patrol. The cheetah mistake beckons. In an accident, a car by four is much more likely to kill a child as an ordinary car. This is how my daughter was left when she was hit by one. Six months in hospital, lucky to be alive. If that's not enough, they pump out huge volumes of greenhouse gases. Think of that before you buy one. You finished? You don't want to chain the door shut? Yeah. Oh, you've got a key? Go on then, lads. Dreadfully sorry about this, man. Like I said, I could throw in a year's insurance and your first service and floor mats, of course. What the hell are you doing? I don't make the rules. I just sell cars. Well, you're selling oh, weapons of mass destruction. Can you both calm down. You're ruining my business. Will you ruin my daughter's life? All right, I'm arresting you for a threatening behaviour and assault. Oh, you don't have to handcuff me. I'll tell you what, behave, and I might take him off. Right, Beth. Portioner, put her in the car. I'll speak to the victim. You all right? You're a bit young, isn't she? Haven't I seen you at my daughter's school? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention my girlfriend. It's the second Some time this month. She won't leave me alone. Why? Her daughter. The 4x4 that knocked her down. I sold it. Well, what's that got to do with you? Precisely. She thinks like I'm some sort of arms dealer, like I'm responsible. I, mean, I feel bad for her. I've got kids. I know what it's like. I lost a sale because of her this morning. First one this week. And look at that. Any idea how long it's going to take me to get that off? It's criminal damage. Do you want to make a complaint? I just want her to stay away. I mean, driving a tank round London, it's just selfish. Surely you can see that. Well. <laughs> Clearly not. Look, can you just wait here a sec? 
You all right? Yeah, I checked her out on the crewman, like you said. She's got previous for breach of the peace and criminal damage, all eco-related over the past six months, but nothing before. Well, it's probably the daughter's accident that set her off. OK, now, keep spate. You don't want to pursue this, so we don't need to push it. But we can leave her in the cell while we do the paperwork. Let her know we mean business. So, how's it going, Will? What, you mean the job? Yeah, fine. Well, I was thinking my life outside of work. It's been a bit of a tough year, isn't it? Not with honey and everything. Yeah, well, you've got to move on, haven't you? Where's that coming from? I don't know. Try up there. Sarge. Zero, Oscar from 543. Go ahead, 543. Ambulance required. Rustbury Drive on the cheap estate, over. All received. Ambulance on way. Oh, God. It's for insane. Right. Francine Stone. A body was found at the bottom of a block of flats on the Cheatham estate at 12.30 this afternoon. Now, I don't want anybody leaving work until we found out whether this was a suicide, an accident or murder. In particular, I want to establish what her state of mind was in the time leading up to her death. Paul Conway, he's our main suspect. I want him brought in ASAP. But at this stage, our principal aim is to fill in this timeline. Now, at 9.30, Francine was at court where she was assaulted by Paul Conway. Immediately after that, she left with Paul Conway's daughter, Jasmina Conway, to drop her off at a foster carer's. She arrives at Stonehill at 10.30 to make a statement. Paul Conway is cautioned. She then leaves with Paul to drop him at home at 10.50. Now, between 10.50 and 12.30, when the body was found, we have a time lapse of one hour, 40 minutes. So I want to know what she was doing and where she went during that time. Now, we've got a scene of crime and we've got a victim. Sergeant Wright is at the scene now, coordinating her door to door to find out exactly where Francine fell from. Sam, I want you to concentrate on the victim. Find out who she was, who she knew, you know the score. First things first, we need a positive ID. So, Kezia, I want you to contact social services. Find out who her next of kin is. You break the news to them, you take them down to the mortuary, you get them to identify the body. And after that, you act as family liaison officer. Great, the death knock. It's all part of the job. OK, let's get to it. Yeah, we have a footprint. All units alert to a blue fiesta suspected stolen from the Cheatham estate. Index Sierra 158 Juliet Whiskey November, owned by Francine Stone. Over. There's no sign of the car. Received 543. Here for me found an old parking ticket in a coat pocket, so I'll circulate the index. Well, we found her shoe on the roof. Looks like that's where she fell from. What else we got? Well, she didn't see her fall. She just came down the stairs and found her on the floor. What about door to door? It's a big block. It could take a while. We did find a phone and a watch on the body. The phone still works. Mm. It's like a watch dot when she hit the ground. 25 past 12. Oh. Well, at least her phone's got an ice number. Listen, I spotted a CCTV camera over there. Can you find out what place and get the footage from us? Sarge. Cheers. Gov? Yeah. Yeah, I've got an ICE number from Francine Stone's phone. Right, go ahead, Nikki. 87483210. Right, got it. One other thing. Her watch is smashed. Looks like she hit the ground at 12.25. 12.25. Right, keep at it, Nikki. Gov, I've got a phone number from the next of kin of Father Bernard Stone. Is that it? Yeah. Right. Oh, and a colleague of Francine said they saw her at the foster carer's home around 11.15am. 11.15? Yeah, she said she was dropping off some toys Paul wanted his daughter to have. So, anything else? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, boss said she was in good spirits and she was great at her job. Right. Well, you better break the news. Gov, I've just looked at Paul Conway's arrest record. This morning at court, he made threats to kill Francine. And that's not all. He lives in the block where her body was found. What number? 72. Sarge! 
Paul. Paul. Oh, he stinks of booze. Get him up and get him dressed. Come on. Mm, come on. Mm. Where are you going now? To work. I've got a whole food cafe on my high street. Oh, I know the one. Frank Newton. You're free to go. But if we have to deal with you again, we won't misunderstand you. Come on. We've got to get back out on patrol. So how long have you been friends with Will? I don't know, about a year. Why? Just wonders. No. What? Nothing. I warn you, Dad, don't let my height fool you. If I hear any rumours going around that station, then you can forget about having children. Yeah, my lips are sealed. Here you are, this must be them. Oh, you lot, come over here. Why aren't you lot at school? It's lunchtime, we're allowed out. What's your name? Claire Smith. The shop owner, I don't want you lot hanging around. Do I look like a shoplifter to you? All right then. Search me if you must, but uh, officer, be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. You lot get back to school. Ain't gonna take down my particulars. Do one. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note of her name. If she truants again, we'll nick her. Hello? Bernard Stone? Yeah? I'm Detective Constable Walker Sunhill. I need to speak to you. Can I come in? Yeah. Thank you. She fell? Yes. Where? We're still investigating exactly what happened. Bernard, we're trying to find out where Francine was this morning. Did you speak to her at all? She came round. She came around what time? I, I don't know. Uh, at midday. Did she stay long? About oh, 20 minutes. Was, was she in good spirits? Yes! What are you suggesting? That she jumped? Is that what you're saying? No, Bernard. What did you talk about? I don't know. To just chat. Listen, she was a happy girl. All right? I was proud of her. I brought her up to be tough, so don't tell me she ended her own life. <sighs> Bernard, we need someone to identify Francine's body. Do you feel up to it? The I. Nixon. Go with Joe. We're at Francine's place. There's no sign of a suicide note. No sign of any financial problem. What about her car? That's not here. And there's a dookie bean soaking in the kitchen, so if it was suicide, I don't think it was planned. What about our phone records? The providers that will have those within the hour. And she's torn an obituary out of a newspaper, name of John Whitestone. OK, I'll look him up. Head back when you're done. OK, go. Bye. What are dookie beans? Oh, don't worry, Terry. Yeah? OK, thanks. Oh, it's Casio. She says that Francine was with her father from midday to 12.20. Well, that would tally with her phone records. Just before midday, Francine made three calls, one of which was to her father. The other two were to a Josephine Eyre. Do we know anything about her? Yeah, I called her. It's Francine's therapist. So half an hour before she dies, she calls her therapist. You better talk to her. Well, there's one more thing, Gov. Joe called from Francine's house and they found an obituary notice cut out, a, a John Whitestone. Now, I did a crimmit check, no form, but I will get Terry to dig a bit deeper when he gets back. Thanks, Sam. Have you booked Paul Conway in? No, sir. He's my bed for me. He's still got alcohol in the system. Here's a CCTV footage from this state. Right, let's have a look at him. Josephine Eyre. Yes? Detective Inspector Nixon, Sunhill Police. Can I come in? Yes. Last time I saw her was... A week ago. Why was she seeing you? I feel really uncomfortable about this. What's said in this room is confidential. I appreciate that, but this is potentially a murder investigation, and we're holding someone in connection with her death. So we need Francine's background, her state of mind, and... Well, I'm afraid my hands are tied. All I can say is that Francine wasn't depressed. 
And she certainly wasn't a suicide risk. Do you keep notes, that sort of thing? Mm, of course. And I record some sessions on video. No, that's a bit complicated. Some of the sessions were attended by Francine's family. I'd need permission from them. Would the easiest thing be for me to get a warrant? So the decision isn't yours? I'd appreciate that. OK. Oh, um, does the name John Whitestone mean anything to you? Come back with your warrant. We can talk then. Was that your stomach? Yeah. Breakfast. I'm going to get a greasy burger. You want one? Oh, no thanks. All units, disturbance at Rachel's Cafe, 351 The High Street. Informant is the owner, Mrs. Rachel Sterling. Any unit deal? Rachel, what now? Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 1, show us a sign. He smashed a window. Who? Well, who do you think? Where'd a telly come from? Well, the skip outside. This will cost me hundreds and I don't have insurance. But what happened? This spate came round an hour ago. It was furious. His face was bright red. He started shouting, threatening me. Well, what did he say? That if I didn't stop the protest, he'd ruin me. After he left, I went to hand out some leaflets outside the shopping centre. <laughs> when I came back, it was like this. How long were you gone for? About an hour. Well, I don't touch anything. You have to arrest him. What if someone had been in the cafe? There were some fibres caught on the corner. Oh, forensics would be interested in that. It's OK. Is that Francine Stone? Definitely somebody else there. Uh, looks like a male. What do you reckon? Posh or Paul? It's time to ask Paul. Keith Spike left about an hour ago. No one knows where he is and he's not on Tony's mobile. Right, he'll turn up and come back later. Gov, FME says he's unfit to be interviewed due to the drink. He can talk, but nothing can be taken as evidence. How long? Could be a couple of hours, yeah. Where's Francine? Francine's dead, Paul. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. There's no need to say anything. We were on the roof and she fell. Yeah, well, don't worry about that just yet. I killed her, didn't I? I killed her. We'll try again with Paul Silver. It was basically a confession. Yeah, but it wouldn't sound up in court. I mean, it could be that he feels responsible simply because he was there when Francine fell. Did Josephine ask say anything else? Not really. I mean, she videoed some of Francine's sessions, but I can't get the tapes until I get the warrant through from the High Court. But I did notice that she reacted when I mentioned the name John Whitestone. The obituary found in Francine's flat? Yeah, no, he's basically clean, apart from a minor incident. He was uh, assaulted 20 years ago. Terry's going to dig that out. Look, I'm going to go and chase up this warrant. I'll see. Look, mate, I've got a feeling that no bad fancies, mate. <coughs> Beth, I doubt it, mate. She's got taste. I know she's young, but she's pretty fit. She'll be chuffed. Just do me a favour, right? Just drop her a nut on Gay. No, Dan, not gay. The chubby chaser. Just tell her I'm not available, right? Office romance just doesn't work. Yeah, I suppose you've got a point. 315 from Sierra Oscar. Go ahead. We've got a key from Spake at the front desk. He wants to speak to you. Received. Yeah. Come on, Beth.
Right, what do you want to talk about? I've changed my mind. I want to press charges against Rachel Sterling. Why? Well, the softly, softly approach isn't working, is it? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Spate. Now that Rachel's been released, you can't go back on your decision to take no action. In fact, we wouldn't mind asking you a few questions about the incident at Rachel's calf today. What kind of incident? No. No, I don't want to get involved. Right then. You're under arrest for criminal damage. Do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questions something which you let rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. What's all this about? Well, someone put an old TV through a window in Rachel's calf. When you think I did it? Where were you at 2 p.m. this afternoon? You went to see her, didn't you? Yes, but only to make a final appeal to her. I, I left her around 1.30. Then where'd you go? I had a meeting with the regional manager. Right, Mr Spate, if you did break that window, your prints would be all over that TV. Now, if you've got something to hide, you better come clean now. You do realise you've been under some pressure recently. Well, I don't have anything to hide. Well, I suggest you give us a number to your regional manager, then. Are you going to speak to him? What's your problem? He's your alibi. I just... Rather you didn't. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Spade, but we do need to investigate the criminal damage done to Rachel's calf. Yeah, we'll need to take your fingerprints too. Then you'll be bailed pending further inquiries. Well, this is ridiculous. I'm the victim here. That woman attacked me. And now you're pinning this on me. Gov, the FME says Paul Conway's fit to be interviewed. That time. Anything back from forensics? They confirm that the footprint on the roof comes from a trainer we found in Paul's flat. So the prints put him on the roof, we got motive and CCTV of a struggle. They're still working on the DNA we took from Paul's fingernails, but I'd say if we get a match to Francine, we're looking really good. There's still a gap in the timeline between Francine dropping Yasmina off at the foster home at 11.15 and starting to make the calls to Bernard just before 12, so we need to fill that gap. I want every moment accounted for. Oh. Right, let's get an admission of guilt out of Paul Conway. We can wrap this up. How's things going? That Dan's treating you all right? Yeah, there's a few questionable personal habits, but he's all right. Oh, well, I'll catch you later. Yeah. You checked out Spate's alibi yet? Yeah, I was just about to find his area manager. It all seems nice. Well, we'll ask you too. Yeah? Yeah, but it's complicated. But I probably shouldn't tell you this, but all the stuff with honey is still pretty raw. Well, Honey and Will were sort of dating. Honey got killed and Will was there when we found her body. It was horrible. Oh, God. Yeah. He's still not over it. You know, he's a bloke, so he keeps it all inside. I know he's still upset. I just thought you should know. Yeah. When Francine gave you a lift home from the station, what did you talk about? About what I'd need to do to get Jasmina back. I said I'd go into a treatment programme. And what happened she left. I gave her a toy to give to Jasmina. How did she end up dead at the bottom of your flats? Now, we know you were there, because we've got a footprint that proves it. We've also got CCTV that shows a man struggling with Francine just before she fell. And no doubt the skin scrapings taken from under your fingernails will belong to Francine. Paul, we know you cared about Francine. Was it an accident? No. Did you push her? Once she'd left, I went out and bought some beers and then I went back to the flat. And then Francine came back. What time? About 20 past 12. She had a note my daughter had written for me. Only when she saw I'd been drinking, she started screaming saying I'd betrayed my daughter. I was a liar. I didn't know what to do. I'd never seen her like that. She stormed out. And you followed? Instead of going downstairs, she went up. I found her on the roof. She was right by the edge. It was dangerous. I went to grab her. Which hand? I can't remember. I was pretty drunk. I kept trying to pull her away, but she just kept pushing me back. And what was she saying? She was saying that I was a liar about the drink. That just mean it deserved better. She was screaming. And then what happened? I lost my balance. 
and she broke away. And then she jumped. She jumped and I couldn't stop her. I killed her. Do you believe him? It's just as likely he's lost his temper, he's followed her and he's pushed her. He assaulted her earlier today. Why would a social worker as experienced as Francine put herself in a dangerous position like that? She didn't predict Paul's reaction to having his kid taken away? Well, CPS aren't going to charge Paul with murder until we've established her state of mind. And we could be months on that. Only for pathology then to reveal she took a load of pills away before. Well, Francine's therapist doesn't believe she was suicidal. Yeah, I know. But we need to be sure. So get that warrant, then get back to me when you've been through Francine's medical records. Dad? Yeah? Keith Spate lied to us. I've just got off the phone to his regional manager. He did have that meeting today, but it was before we went round to Rachel's to give that final warning. His manager's hopping mad about the protests, told Spate to sort it out to find another job. Oh, nice. Right, let's go pick him up then. Yeah, I also did an FIU check. It's a bit weird. It seems he bought two cars from his own dealership in the past month. Well, he's desperate. He wants his business to look healthy. What do you reckon? Well, I think he's a nice guy under a lot of pressures who got frustrated and lashed out. I do feel sorry for Keith, but Rachel's right, isn't she? RTA's involved in 4x4s are normally a lot worse, aren't they? I think it's unlicensed cabs that cause all the trouble. And cyclists. I mean, he'd be stupid enough to ride a bike in London. Yeah. It's only dangerous because of the... Stop! Please! Oh. Yeah, 158 Juliet, Whiskey November. What? And all units are like went out for that earlier on. Belongs to Francine Stone, a social worker. How do you remember that? I'm just good with numbers and stuff. <laughs> just stay still! Oh. Got. They're admitting they took the vehicle from the Cheetah estate. It had no alarm or no immobiliser, so they thought they'd take it from the spin. And you remember the index from the circulation? Yeah. Good spot. Terry? She had a meeting with a Meredith Whitestone at 11.30 this morning. You lied to us about the time of your meeting, didn't you, Mr. Spade? You finished play before you said it would, so you had time to get the Rachel's calf. Look, Rachel Sterling does my head in. I admit it. There's nothing I'd like more than to take a sledgehammer to a calf. I couldn't do it. Ask anyone. I haven't got the guts. I'm too soft. Too soft to sell cars, that's for sure. What do you mean? I've quit, OK? You can tell Rachel she's won. All the money in London. The car should have been walking out the door. It's not like I even like the job. Rachel's mad, but at least she stood up for herself. That's what my manager said. So I told him to stick it. Good. Look, excuse me. Hello? The forensics have been in from Rachel's calf. They've lifted some prints from the telly, but none of them match Keith's face. Well, they're still claiming he's innocent, yeah. Yeah, they looked at the threads we found. Nothing odd, just growing cotton. Did Rachel say anything to you about touching the telly? No, nothing. Right, well, it says here that her prints are all over it. Right, cheeky man, she's trying to set him up. OK, I'll come back to the station. Meet me outside. We'll go and have a word with her. Francine first came to me seven years ago. She was suffering from depression. She'd dropped out of university and was suffering a sort of breakdown. It took a long time to establish trust, but eventually she revealed that she had been sexually abused as a child. I see. We worked together for several months. Then she said she felt ready to tell her family. Was Bernard Stone her abuser? No, no. But he came in. He was very shocked, particularly as he knew the man. You remember I was here last time and I mentioned the name John Whitestone? That was who Francine said abused her. She, um, she had his obituary in her flat. Is there any way his death could have made her suicidal? Mm, Francine was strong. She's a success story. An outstanding social worker. Because she'd been there, she had real empathy. 
I guess sometimes a little too much. She did feel things very deeply. And the last time you saw her, she showed no signs of depression? Mm, far from it. She was even starting to think about having a boyfriend again. You can imagine what a huge step that would be. But this is her last week. You can judge for yourself. It'd be a big step, wouldn't it? Having a boyfriend again. How long has it been? Long time. Years. I just couldn't bear being touched. And what if a man touched you now? How do you think you'd feel? I don't know. I'm scared. Yeah. I don't want to be alone anymore. Okay, thanks. So you feel you're ready for a The skin scrapings taken from Paul's nails are a positive for Francine Stone. Sounds silly, but um, I want someone I can trust. I think I'm starting to look for a future. Why don't we stop there? Just say, okay. <clears throat> well, she wasn't suicidal last week, that's for sure. No. This is an older tape. This is the moment Francine told her father she'd been molested. About seven years ago. You didn't tell me. If you told me, of course, I would have done something. How could you have been so blind? I hated going around you made me go. I wanted you to learn a musical instrument. I thought you were being lazy. That's why I forced you to go. If I had known, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do we have enough against Paul Conway, then? Oh. We just found Francine Stone's diary in her car. She had an appointment with Meredith Whitestone this morning at 11.30. Whitestone? John Whitestone's daughter, maybe? Or widow. Well, we know that John Whitestone was a victim of assault in 1988, so we dug a bit deeper. His attacker was Bernard Stone, almost killed him. But John Whitestone didn't prosecute. Bernard said he didn't know about Francine's abuse at the time. Go and talk to Meredith Whitestone. I want to know everything about her meeting with Francine this morning. Terry, get on the phone to Kezia. Tell her to bring Bernard to the station. We need to ask him some questions about his daughter. Meredith Whitestone. Yes. I'm Detective Inspector Nixon, Sunhill Police. I've been expecting you. I knew Francine when she was a child. John gave her piano lessons. He enjoyed teaching. She contacted me a few weeks ago, after John passed away. Started dropping in for a chat. I just thought she was being friendly. To be honest, I felt a little uncomfortable at first, bearing in mind what had happened between John and her father. What did happen? They had a big fight, years ago. Bernard accused him of being indecent with Francine during their music lessons. But John swore Bernard was wrong. He was my husband. I had to believe him. I mean, it all sounded so ridiculous. John was such a kind man. What happened this morning when Francine came to visit you? We had a cup of tea and a chat. Then she said she wanted to talk about John. She just came out with it. That he... <clears throat> I realise this must be hard for you. Meredith, why do you think Francine decided to speak about this now? She was asking about the other children that John taught. I think she was planning to contact them. How's she coping? I'm sorry, Meredith. Francine's dead. What? How? She fell from a, the roof of a building. Oh, God. When Francine left you this morning, what sort of state was she in? She was upset. Really angry. Why? 
She was fine at first. I was amazed how strong she was. But then I mentioned the fight between John and her father. She didn't know anything about it. Have you charged him? We haven't got any evidence to say Mr. Spade did it. He did ask me to let you know he's quit his job. Rachel, did you touch the TV at any point after you found it? Why'd you ask? Because your fingerprints are all over it. Well, I found the telly lying in the street this morning. I put it in the skip. We found some green cotton fibres on the side, and this morning you were wearing a green top. Wool. A woolen top, not cotton. Really? If you think I'd smash my own shop up, you're wrong. This is my daughter coming back from school. This is Rose. Not Claire Smith. What's going on? I spoke to your daughter today at lunchtime. She went in school. What? Rose, is this true? I had a free period. Well, you know you're not allowed off the school grounds. Even in a free period. Oh, come on. Don't try and play the Kerry mother act just because the police are here. I don't suppose you could tell us anything about a smashed window, could you, Rose? Well, now, just hang on. What are you saying? Well, the threads we found are the same colour as Rose's uniform. Yeah, how'd you rip your sleeve? Rose? I did it. I smashed the window. <sighs> and he enjoyed it. Then we'll have to arrest you for criminal damage. So Francine was in a state when she left Meredith at 10 to 12. She calls the therapist, no joy. She then calls Bernard and goes round to his place. Now, she must have got there just after 12. Now, she was found dead 20 minutes later, so she can't have been there for more than a couple of minutes. Not the 20 minutes that he claims. So it wasn't just a chat. It was a short, blazing row. Gov, Bernard Stone's in the front office. You ready? Why, Rose? After all I've done. For you. F for both of us. I love you. And you just no, gotta... don't. What? You don't love me. That girl on the poster lying in the hospital bed, tubes down her throat. You love her. But you're the poster girl for an important cause. I'm Rose, I'm not a victim. All the one is to have a bit of fun. Is that so much to ask? That woman almost took everything from me. You were lying there in a coma. They told me you might die. I never told you. But at one point, your heart stopped beating. And I watched them trying to resuscitate you. I promised that if you lived, I... What about me, Mum? Today we're supposed to go to hospital for my checkup. Together. I forgot. Can we assume you won't be prosecuted? Yeah. I think we just need a bit of time. It looks like Rose finally got through to her mum. Yeah, it's just a shame she wasted so much police time doing it. I'm going for a slash. Oh, charming. I'll go and get him a cup of tea. Who was that? It was Bernard Stone. He's a father of a social worker who we found dead this morning. Oh, that's awful. I mean, can you imagine? It's always tough when someone dies, especially when they're young. Look, Will, if you ever want to talk about anything... Yeah, like what? Well, you know, honey. What do you mean by that? Well, what you just said about people dying young and... Well, Dan told me about that. Hang on a minute. What gives you the right to poke your nose into my business? Look, I'm over, honey, all right? I just told Dan to put you off. I was just trying to be friendly. How can you get Dan to do that? Use Honey as an excuse. How sick are you? You pretend you're fine, like Honey dying hasn't affected you. You're so not over it, Will. It doesn't take a genius to work that out. Now, I know this is a terrible time for you. So, I'll be frank. We are unclear as to exactly what happened to Francine during the hours leading up to her death. So we're hoping you can help us out. If you think I can, 
Uh, you said that Francine visited you this morning, is that correct? Yes. What sort of a mood was she in when she left? Fine. She... She was fine. And what did you talk about? You know, it, nothing much. When was the first time that Francine told you that she'd suffered abuse? What's that got to do with anything? Could you tell me? Um, well, when she was in therapy, I was called into a session. Uh, she told me then. And that was the first time? Yes. So in 1988, when the abuse was taking place, you knew nothing about it? No. On the 5th of June of that year, you were held in connection with an assault on John Whitestone. Why did you attack Mr. Whitestone? He owed me money. That's not true, is it? Meredith Whitestone told us that you beat him up because you found out about the sexual abuse. So what did Francine say when she came round to see you today? I know this is difficult for you, so I'm going to make it easier. We've managed to piece together Francine's movements this morning. And I'll take you through what I think happened. If you could just confirm with a yes or no if you think I'm right, okay? At 11.30 a.m., Francine visited Meredith Whitestone, the widow of the man she claimed sexually molested her when she was eight years old. Yes. Now, while she was there, she also found out that you'd had a fight with John Whitestone at the time of the abuse. Yes. Even though for years afterwards, you claimed to know nothing about it. She was shocked. She came round to ask you why you'd said nothing about it at the time. Yes. And she accused you of betraying her, of lying to her. No, I, I never lied. We have a tape here of the therapy session, which was recorded almost 12 years after the abuse was discovered by yourself. If you told me, of course, I would have done something. How could you have been so blind? I hated going man that you made me go. I wanted you to learn a musical instrument. I thought you were being lazy. That's why I forced you to go. If I had known, I... Oh. I'm sorry. I, I was... I was early picking her up one day. Outside, I, I could hear her lesson. Sounded great. I, I wanted to see her play, so I, I looked through the window. He was touching her. She was playing. The look on her face. And then what happened? I, I didn't want Francine to see, so I, I took her home. And then I, I drove back to his house again. I, I didn't even try to hold back. I couldn't stop. Afterwards, I said to him, if he pressed charges, I'd kill him. What did you say to Francine? Nothing. He didn't mention anything. I... I tried to, but... I couldn't. So, she grew up without being able to talk to anybody about her abuse. And when she finally plucked up courage to tell you about it in the therapy session, you pretended to know nothing about it. <laughs> so, today, she discovered that you'd been lying to her all along. And that her breakdown and depression could have been avoided. So when Francine left you today, was she fine, like you said, Mr. Stone? No. She said my lies killed her. She said she'd, she'd rather be dead. She slammed the door and she was gone.
I'll just get some fresh air. Had a brief chat with the coroner's officers. They're happy with our inquiry. Sounds like they're going to go with the finding of suicide. Good. Wasn't pretty in there, was it? No. Still, had to be done. I think if Paul had gone down for Francine Stone's murder, that would have been, well, another betrayal. You know, I can remember it telling me to live for moments like that, cracking the case. Consequences didn't bother me. Older and wiser now, eh? Got better judgment. Thanks for everything today, Sam. It was a hard day. Roll on tomorrow, eh? Next time on The Bill. Please! Earlier today we were given information on a man we suspect is an active paedophile. We think that man is Michael Bryan. I just found a load of pigs of him with kids at the park at the beach. It makes me feel sick.